Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there a clock? Is there a clock here? Sorry? A clock. The next speaker is Javier Alvarez. Uh, okay. He will talk about hydrodynamic behavior in thermal transport. Okay. Can I start? Okay. Good morning. My name is Javier Alvarez. Uh, I come from UAB, that is a campus near Barcelona, 20 kilometers from Barcelona. Uh, it's a nice place. Well, it's, it's my university, I have to say this. Okay, these are my collaborator, co collaborators. Uh, I, these are my group, my third group, and these are the guys that uh, they are working in experiment and sometimes help us in, in make the measurements like we need. Uh, this is David Joe, that is, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, the, the father of the theory, that is a theory based on study uh, irreversible, irreversible phenomena. And in, in, in a specific uh, case, we have the, the phonon transport that is one of these. This is uh, our student, Paul Torres, that he has done most of these calculations that we, uh, we, have, uh, we will see here. Okay, this is uh, the summary. The first thing that I want to say is that I'm coming here to give a different perspective of the topic. I know that most of you are working in a more Hamiltonian uh, point of view. I come from a more thermodynamic point of view. But at the end, these both, uh, these both models should converge. So uh, I'm not going to tell you, mm, well, you are doing things wrong. No, you are doing things right. The only thing that I'm going to uh, come here is, I'm going to uh, say here is that we have a different perspective that can give you insight when you do your uh, Hamiltonian uh, approach. So please don't try to see this as a, uh, something that is against uh, any theory, but is complementary. This is very important because it can sound some strange, but well, if we try to make the connection, that is what I'm going. Uh, I'm going to make this. At the end, you can see that it's not so strange. So, uh, at the uh, at the first part, we are going to talk about uh, more from a more thermodynamic point of view. I will give you the basis of our, our theory. And then we use uh, the Boltzmann tra transport equation in the form of the guyer kuhn hansel approach to try to connect the Hamil Hamiltonian approach with this uh, framework uh, that is extended irreversible thermodynamics. At the end, you will see that it's a natural connection because we are based on the same uh, equations. And at the end, we show that connected, connecting this extended and a specific uh, application of the extended that is either dynamic equation connected this with the kinetic connective connective model we at the end we will be able to solve uh, complex geometries that in some hamiltonian approach are tricky to solve okay let's start with the transfer equation far for equilibrium i will give a brief uh, introduction just to make uh, a nice connection Okay, in equilibrium, everybody knows that the phonon distribution function is uh, the Bose-Einstein distribution. Uh, it does not depend on the position, on the time. You have equilibrium. If you put the system out of, out of equilibrium, for example, in a, in a smooth way, like imposing, imposing a thermal gradient, what you, what you get is something that it can be represented by the local equilibrium approach. So this is something that is so simple, just choosing a different temperature in each position and say that in that position you have the same local, uh, the same equilibrium uh, distribution but with a different temperature. This is what we get. The things start to go wrong when you make a special tricky uh, heating, you, you impose boundary conditions that are not smooth, or you have angles. When you have such stuff, what it happens is that the distribution function is some part of the, of, the, of the distribution can have a form that it does not follow the equilibrium, the equilibrium Bose-Einstein Bose distribution, that is the one that is with light uh, uh, line here. 
What it happens then? Well, it happens that then things will depend on the position and the time, and we need some uh, kind of approach to solve it. And everybody knows that the kind, to, uh, the kind of uh, equation that it nicely solves this is the Boltzmann transport equation. The Boltzmann transport equation is an equation that you put an initial condition in the, in the distribution function, and this equation tells you how it behaves, how it relaxes to something that at the end it will be a distribution function in equilibrium. So we have that uh, this, uh, this equation uh, is a, a nice equation to, to, uh, to use. Well, it's the best equation to, uh, to use in this uh, kind of situation. So we need a starting point, and we see that the system is relaxing. OK. Well, I don't introduce this because uh, the Professor Sfaragiani has uh, introduced it uh, so well, so I'm not going to repeat all the... OK. Our approach, and now I'm going to talk something that it has uh, a thermodynamic flavor. Our, uh, our approach is, well, we have the phonon distribution that it can depend on the position and the time and the, on, on the wave vector. Uh, so is a function that it tells you the, the amount of energy that you have in each single mode. But instead of, instead of working on this, we are going to work on the momentums of this distribution. As everybody knows, it's the same working with one function that working with the momentums of that function. You can reconstruct one on, of another if the uh, function is smooth enough. And we know that in physics we don't have a, a strange situations. So this this would be uh, you could be done. Uh, you, this could be done in, in this situation. So the first momentum is the energy density is the the the, the typical. Um, <coughs> integral of, uh, of energy. The second momentum is the heat flow, that is uh, energy times velocity integrated for all the phonons. And you can extend this to all the modes that you want. You can go to the second, third, and moment. Okay? So at the end, you will have an infinite number of moments. Well, at that point, you may think, well, it's the same working with an infinite number of phonons that working with an infinite number of modes. But this is not exactly true. This is not exactly true because, well, um, the modes does not appear all together at the same time, but it appears depending on the, on the way that you hit. OK, let's, let's start first. Uh, we, we work with the BTE uh, equation. We change to the moment of description, and instead, instead of working with n equations for the n modes, we work with n equations with the n moments. So you can get n equations relating all these moments. Now we are going to see the, the, the structure. And this is what I was talking about. Not all the moments appear at the same time. When, when you do a smooth heating, a gradient heating, you only have the first moment. So when you hit something a little bit harder than this smooth uh, uh, first heating, is it, is it not expected that moments of very higher order appear? You expect at the first time to uh, appear a number of moments, but not all the distribution of moments. Because to have all the distribution, you should have very, very strange uh, uh, heatings. So in the experiments, Usually, the, 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 um, the heating is not so that, uh, that strange. So this is the structure that you get. I don't want to get into the details of here, of this. This can be read in, in most of our uh, papers. If you want a nice description of this, go to the, the, the book of Joe about th extended thermodynamic. I want just to show you what is the, the, the structure of this of this. Uh, 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 linear equations. Uh, you have uh, a moment. Uh, you have a moment with its derivative. That is what it, you have here. That is related with the gradient of the moment of lower uh, uh, order and the divergence of the moment of the higher order. So n is related with n minus one and n plus one. This is the structure. It doesn't matter uh, what is this. I'm going to show you the first 
the first equations that we can get from these, uh, starting from the most simple one, that is the Fourier law. You get the Fourier law by saying, well, let's take only first order moment. Uh, as I told you, when you put a gradient, you only have first order. You, we know that, uh, that uh, Fourier law um, should appear. So the first line is the zero order, that is energy conservation. The time derivative of the temperature is related with the divergence of the heat flux. Here you cannot have gradient of uh, lower than zero moment, obviously. And here you have that something that is de it's, uh, depending, it's linear with the flux, it depends on the gradient of the, uh, the zero order uh, magnitude, that is temperature. Temperature or energy, you can, <coughs> with a specific heat, you can relate it. Okay, if you do this, you get this, because you have the gradient, you have the Q, you have the divergence, and you have the time derivative. This is Fourier uh, law. But it happens, it, yeah. Beta 2 and alpha 1. This one and this one. Well, in this case, Fourier law, we are doing a, a steady state situation. We are doing a steady state. And we don't take higher than first order, so this is removed. OK? If you, if you, if you want to include uh, the time derivative of this uh, Q, what you get is maxwell catania uh, equation. <coughs> so each number of phonons will give you different, uh, different equations. If you put the time derivative here, you will get uh, <coughs> the, the widely known uh, no, uh, maxwell catania Let's increase it, the, no, the order that we get. Uh, let's stay in the steady state. We can uh, increase the, uh, the generality by putting this derivative. But what you get in, in, this, uh, in this case is a, a third equation that you can solve it in a matrix of three uh, magnitudes, that are the three fluxes with a three, three times three uh, matrix, but one thing that you can do is to take this second order flux, obtain this second order flux in terms of the gradient of the flux. The second order flux is the flux of the flux. This is like, uh, well, th then we are going to relate it. And then put it here. And what you have is the time, uh, the space derivative of a space derivative. What you get? you get a Laplacian. You get a second-order derivative. Well, you can get from two uh, first-order uh, differential equations, uh, one second-order differential equation. And this is the guyer kuhn hansel equation. So what I'm trying to show the, here is that our approach can give you the equation that you want. So it's a framework to obtain this kind of uh, equation. If you go to higher orders, you can get higher order expressions that has been published in the literature, but I'm not going to show uh, all of this. Well, <coughs> yeah, the, the criteria to, to truncate, no, the criteria to truncate is uh, when, you see the, when you see your experiment, you should, in, in certain manner, um, know how many uh, orders it appears. Um, are you are asking me that I should, well, which is the way that I, I have to know the orders? No, 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 no. The, this is not the thermodynamical point of view. What I'm trying to say is that we are going to use the order, the order of equations that we need to describe the system. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, what I to uh, told you is just truncate, take all the second moments, the terms of second moment, the rest. No, no, but let let me make. You want to make. You want to know the connection with the Hamiltonian approach, no? No. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. No. Uh, okay. You you are talking that here you can have other orders. Yeah, 
No, because in, the, in some experiments, this moment will be relaxed so fast. But, but, but this is this is a standard approach. This is, uh, for example, Chapman Xcock has done this. Uh, um, the well, there is the 13 uh, moment approximation, the 26 moment approximation. This is a standard in non-equilibrium thermodynamics. It's pure standard. Yeah, this is. You need the closure, so you at the end you you are telling that. There are some order that it does not appear. At the end, you should make an assumption. You should say, this moment will not appear. Well, when you make the connection with me, trust in me, just when we arrive to the guyer hansel equation, I show you an, a specific thing of this. And a specific, because this is where I'm going to talk about. OK. Well, one of the first, uh, one of the first uh, works that we've done that we did when we have these, uh, these uh, expressions is not to truncate this. The first thing... I just wanted to get some clarity. Um, so I guess if you, if you can go back just a couple slides, I'm just trying to understand your, your um, starting point. So you're expressing um, these basic conservation laws essentially as um, some expansion. And then what is the, what is the, um, what's the basic principle that you're applying that, that I will I will tell you the basic principle in a number of slides. It's an entropic basis. No, 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 I mean, mathematically, there was some basic principle you applied to even state that something well, like conservation of energy the, is, the is somehow an expression of an expansion. So what is you, that? you can have a standard graduate, graduate books talking about uh, um, non-equilibrium thermodynamics and how Boltzmann, is, uh, Boltzmann equation can be expanded. This is what I told you, the chapman Engskog approach is one standard that is in all the, on all the books. So I don't know if I have to uh, answer you. This is... This is uh, uh, okay, if we... If we, try, uh, if we use all the moments, if we do the, uh, the expansion and work in the, in, the, in, the, in the Fourier transformation of these equations, we can work this uh, uh, algebraically. And what we, what we get is some uh, continued fraction uh, uh, expression that it can be uh, solved giving you the thermal conductivity in terms of the non-local uh, uh, non uh, scale, the non-local non scale. So we, we compare these with, uh, for example, nanowires, uh, nano nanowires uh, experimental data, and we observe that this uh, follows uh, correctly. And we, if we do this with, well, this is something that is, uh, for example, in Munich is starting to observe that when you heat uh, with a very reduced uh, 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 lasers, you can get something that uh, is uh, thermal conductivity that is reduced. Well, uh, because of the time, I, I will pass this, but in the frequency domain, you can get more or less the same. I will not go, because I want to focus on the, on the things that uh, they have just suggested me. Okay. Uh, Let's go to the uh, phonon hydrodynamics. Uh, in this part, I will not going to talk about this. I will follow this. The, but then, at the end of this, I will talk about the things that you asked me. OK. Uh, if we go to second order, we get this guyer kron hansel equation that it has been uh, working the last uh, 40 years. Uh, and this is the Navier-Stokes equation. As you can see, there is a similarity between this non-local term and this non-local term in the fluids. And this is the reason why we call this phonon hydrodynamics. And at the end, this term will act like this term that it will give you the uh, viscosity, some kind of viscosity of the, of the system. 
Okay, let's work with this uh, equation, the phonon hydrodynamic equation, and we, if we have a, a second order uh, uh, differential equation, we need an extra boundary term. And in uh, hydrodynamics, the standard way to put this boundary, uh, uh, this boundary condition is uh, the Maxwell-Boltzmann uh, condition. Then it gives you the flux in the boundary due to uh, some kind of the, der the derivative of the flux uh, inside uh, the, the your system. Okay, this at the end this gives you how much the uh, distribution, how much is reduced. Uh, well, <coughs> this term can be uh, related with a specularity. When when you have a, a pure specular. Uh, situation, you have that C goes to infinity, so at the end here you will have no reduction, and here for diffuse boundary you have sigma going to 1, and then C goes to 1, and you have some kind of reduction of the flux here. So what you get is something like this. This is the solution for a nanowire, this is the, the heat flux at the boundary, 1 it gives you the Fourier law, as you can see, the boundary condition uh, uh, reduces the thermal conductivity near the boundaries and it goes up until it saturates to the Fourier law. Okay, this is for a large, large nanowire. That's a large nanowire where the non-local scale, this L that we are used, is uh, small compared with the size of the system. Then you, you only have a, a, a little reduction in uh, near the, the, the boundaries. Okay. If we go, well, if you make a magnification, you, you can get some uh, saturation. These, uh, these are the same that this, okay? If we go to uh, smaller, uh, smaller wires, we can get that, oh, we see that as this non-local scale is starting to be comparable to, to the size of the, of the wire, we are starting to see that this is starting to affect to the limit value, that is from some kind of uh, boundary conditions, we, we can get something that is not behaving ex uh, exactly like Fourier law if the system is very reduced. And if you go to smaller and smaller, you can get reduction and reduction of the, of the heat flow inside. Okay, uh, this is like the uh, Poiseuille flow in, the, in, in a fluid. But if you go to extremely reduced, uh, extremely reduced, uh, situation, you will get that L is large compared with uh, L, the size of the system. Look at that, you obtain flat, flat uh, profiles that is telling you that you can see this as a Fourier, effective Fourier uh, behavior where the thermal conductivity is no longer the bulk one, but a reduced bulk. This is like using a Matheson rule with a Fourier, uh, with a Fourier law and putting an effective thermal conductivity to reduce. So what I want you to see is that from our expressions, we can get the same behavior that we are getting in, uh, in the Hamiltonian uh, approach, where you use the Matheson rule to, uh, to include. But it's not exactly the same. It gives you a slightly different re uh, respect to Matheson rule. As you know, Matheson rule is, no, no, is not valid. Uh, Matheson rule can be used to approximate, but not to give uh, exact, uh, exact values. Well, maybe this uh, can help us in understand this. Okay, if we do uh, the calculations for, uh, uh, for several uh, temperatures, we can, we can get something that uh, explains the thermal conductivity of that wires. This does not mean that we have the full picture, because obviously this needs the a specific uh, knowledge of the boundary condition that uh, this is too difficult to obtain. You need to make uh, images of all the, all the wires and this is uh, in the literature, they are not all published and, and it's very difficult to obtain. But, but the values that we obtain, that we have uh, used here are one, uh, one to four. Um, let's, let me tell you that that obviously C cannot be a constant. It cannot be a constant because it depends on the specularity, and the specularity, as you go to lower temperatures, increases. So C could not be constant. So that's the reason why we need to make, to, we have used an expression without parameters, without any fitting parameters, but 
we use an expression that try to explain this. What I mean is that don't take this as a fully predictive, but as a model that can help to understand this. Yeah, with an expression for the C that is like fitting. But what, it's not important that, for me, it's not important that it fits. The, the fit is not important. The important is that the model can give you this trend. Once you know this, you can start to uh, work with the C and then start to, to obtain microscopical information. At the end, C should be related with the Rough, the roughness of the distribution and with the wave vector of the main phonon. And as you go to lower temperature, the phonon change or the specularity change. And this is extremely difficult, you know. All of you know that it's extremely difficult. The main point that I tried to, to tell you uh, here is that with this model, we can get these uh, curves also. It's not, we, you don't have to go to the Matheson rule to get the, the nice plots. You can work on this and then start to uh, study. OK, so the, the main idea is that with the dynamic, we can get uh, a, a description of the uh, reduced uh, scale um, uh, uh, samples. OK. OK, this, if you want to explore of this. Uh, yeah. And it seems that uh, the viscosity effect is dominant only when there is a collective motion of particles, right? Yeah. But your material is just... Um, Silicon nanowire, I guess, where normal scattering is not very dominant. This is not true. I know that it can sound strange. It's, it's different to tell that the contribution of collective modes are little, and the other is which is the amount of collective that you have. Because the mean free time in, in collective regime is reduced. So when you multiply the amount of uh, collective regime with the tau of the collective regime, you get that diminution of the contribution. But silicon is collective. And because of this, it can behave like this. I know that in the bulk thermal conductivity, this contribution is not important. But the main message is that when you use the hydrodynamic uh, equation, that is this, this term is no longer uh, uh, removable. You should work with this. You, you, can work, you can think that this, you can work telling that this is kinetic. You can work on this. But you cannot uh, predict this term if you don't assume that it's collective. So I'm, I'm not sure I understood the, your, your uh, answer correctly, but uh, let me clarify. So if we assume the same material, bulk phase and nanowire form, depending on the form, uh, the collective motion of particle, collective motion of phonon contribution can be larger in nanowire form. Is it correct? No, 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 no. I'm telling you that this term is important, not that the contribution. The amount, that, that the contribution that you have, it could be the same. Okay. This is what I'm telling you. If you go to lower temperatures, as normal scattering is more intense, you can expect that it can increase. But that's not the, 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 the main idea that I want to say. The only thing that I'm telling you is that this term allows you to understand uh, silicon nanowires at the nanoscale because the prediction that it gives you at extremely reduced values of the size is different from the Matheson rule. OK? okay. The, 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 the important thing is not if it's or it's, or it's not collective. It's the equation. But uh, then let me uh, explain this way. So uh, I guess the most well-known solution for Boltzmann transport equation is uh, fuchs john daimler solution for ballistic regime. Fuchs? fuchs john daimler solution. And fuchs john daimler solution does not have any viscous term, but it still can predict uh, the finite uh, heat flux at the yeah. boundary. So what's the difference between your model and Fuchs-Sonheimer? Fuchs-Sonheimer uh, equation is based on a, kinetic, a, ba a kinetical yes, basis. Correct. It's a way to put this, this effect, the effect of the Laplacian, in a kinetic way. That's correct, yes. But it, it's not working perfectly. I think that uh, Gang Chen and I think you also, yes. I don't know, have published 
a paper telling that Fuchsheimer cannot help you to understand the thermal grating. Is that true? Well, it's not the exact way to put it from a thermodynamic point of view. I don't know at the end which will, which will be the best approach. I, I only try to say that this approach gives you differences. And that's the only point. Maybe at the end it will not be important. The important thing is that you have a different derivation. Okay, so this will give you more or less the same as, as uh, okay. Fuchs-Songheimer. So at the end, I think that we are putting the same ingredients, but in a different way. Okay, thank you. As I, as I have told you, all of, all of us, we are working with the same experiment, and I think that at the end, we should work with the same uh, approaches, but with different uh, ways of doing this. Okay, let me go fast. Okay, let's start. Let, let, let's now try to make some kind of connection that uh, you have talk, uh, asked me to do. Well, uh, because of the time, I will not take too much time. But anharmonicity has been introduced by Professor Sfarjani. You have the the drift term here that it tells you how it behaves if you have an inhomogeneity of the distribution function and the problem with the bulk uh, solution of the thermal conductivity is that this is an harmonic uh, what it means is that the, it means that this the expression once you linearize the, the the collision term that is some kind of integral of the distribution function depending on the transition rate when you do this and you linearize this that this has been done by most of you in a very uh, clever way um, you get something that is not diagonal okay the point is that when you, this is not diagonal you can not assume in fact uh, that diagonal uh, solution will give you uh, a nice approach <coughs> okay but there is an approach that tells you well let us assume that the only that, that the only excitation that you have is in the mode that you are uh, calculating well you can diagonalize this way this is an, an approximation where you find the relaxation time approximation where you change this by a single value single value and you assume that every phonon is relaxing in uh, it's, uh, itself. Uh, so there is not connection between modes. Well, when you do this, as Professor uh, Sferzani has said, you get nice approximation of a large amount of, uh, of, um, of uh, materials. So relaxation not time approximation is not that bad. That's, that's a, a good thing. But it's very bad for some some uh, specific situations. For example, in diamond, it, you cannot get, uh, uh, with relaxation time approximation, you cannot get diamond, and you cannot get from the bulk value, you cannot get to the reduced uh, scale value. You cannot get from one to the other, you cannot uh, get this. This is, uh, the, the, the explanation of, of this, uh, I will try to do it in a couple of slides. Uh, 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 a way to solve the this situation is to work with the iterative, uh, that approach that uh, you have uh, uh, obtained, that you, you start from RTA or from one guess, and you get some distribution, you put it in the, in the collision term and start again and do it until it converges. It's also a nice approach, and it gives you better results even for diamond. So with iterative uh, uh, expression, you can get uh, nice values for diamond. At this point, I don't want to... I, I'm going to tell something, but maybe you can uh, say uh, something about this, because I have found that the values when you go to the reduce it scale are not good when you use the Matheson rule approximation. So, well, you have solved the, the Boltzmann transport equation, but you have a difficulty in putting the boundary condition. That's, that's the thing that uh, everybody has found in the... So, we have a situation that we have solved the problem of diamond, for example, but not the reduced scale. In another, in another approach, the one of Mazarin Cipollotti has done a, dif a different approach that is diagonalized. Let's di diagonalize this and let's explain the thermal conductivity in terms of kinetic and that is uh, independent modes uh, going uh, in the sample. When you get this, well, you diagonalize this, but you, did, uh, you uh, um, complicate 
this term. But in bulk situation, this doesn't matter because in bulk situation, this expression can be also diagonalized and then you can get the relaxation with these uh, relaxons, uh, the, 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 the objects that they found, they call it relaxons, uh, you can get uh, the correct value of the thermal conductivity. Okay, that's, that's our nice approach. They are numerically based, and our approach is, can we find something that is more simple to get this direction? And this is what we try to do in the kinetic uh, collective regime. Well, our approach is based on the separation of res resistive and non-resistive. As you know, normal scattering, that uh, has also been introduced by uh, Dr. Sparjani, normal scattering cannot relax flux. So when you express these in the momentum, you get here a zero. This is something that is not relaxed. The, with only normal, uh, normal phonon and uh, normal collisions. Well, and here is the drift. The drift of the operator, I want you to see that when you do this, you get the same structure as I explained you in the first uh, slides. So from, uh, starting from this and reading the guillain hansel equation, you can get this structure. So you, it's, it, it's uh, perfectly derived. It's not, uh, it's not phenomenological. Our approach at the starting point, it was phenomenological, but we make the connection. That's the point. So for us, reading guillain hansel equation is a way to understand our formalism in order to understand kinetic uh, approaches. Okay. Well, this zero, ah, the, the other thing is that don't take R22 as the second moment also. Uh, you can take R22 as all the moments from the 2 to the infinite, okay? All the moments, that this should be an uh, extremely large matrix. The point that we do, you, you do this is that when you get the first order equation, as, as I did in the aerodynamic expression that I put the second in the first and I obtain an equation, you get this expression from the thermal conductivity. And this expression, as you may see, is a term that it does not depend on the normal and a term that it it do. It depends on the normal collision, and from this we can we can uh, start to think what it happens if normal collisions are not important. If normal collisions are not important, what we get n to two is equal to zero, and what we get is the inverse the inverse of the original matrix. And what you get if n to 2, that is normal, normal collision, are extremely important, extremely important, it means that between two resistive, you can have hundreds of normal collisions. When you do this, this will go to infinite, and you will get the removal of this second term, and you will get this. When you try to calculate, you obtain the expression of, the, uh, of the, 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 the usual expression of the thermal conductivity, this is the usual kinetic expression, but instead of working only with the kinetic mean free times, you get, in the kinetic regime, you get this, let's work with the kinetic mean free times, but in the collective, you have to uh, make the average of all the uh, mean free times in the distribution, I get a single relaxation time for all the phonons. And this is what you, we get from the ab initio, uh, thermo, the ab initio uh, relaxation times. This is ab, in, ab initio obtained uh, results. And this is what you get when we do this and when we do this. Obviously, the green one that is the kinetic, every single mon mode has its own uh, mean free path. And in the collective regime, uh, all the phonons has the, mean free, the same mean free path. When you, well, now this is the, the, the connection with the thermodynamics. What is the intuition from a thermodynamic point of view of this change of regime? This is easy. In the kinetic regime, if you do the entropy generation, if you calculate the entropy generation from the flux, this is, these are a standard uh, equation. This comes from the scattering, this comes for the, from the drift. These are the entropy generation in uh, uh, starting for working with the Boltzmann equation. When you do this and you say that each single mode is generating its own uh, uh, entropy and is not generating something related with the rest, that is the kinetic regime, you get at the end the kinetic expression for the thermal conductivity. 
But what it happens when you are in a collective regime? The normal scattering is redistributing energy. So what it happens with the entropy? Entropy cannot be generated by each mode alone, but for all the, all the distribution. Okay. And when you have that normal scattering is not important, this will give you infinite and this will give you zero. In zero, it tells you that you have the kinetic regime. So I want you to see that this is not a phenomenological expression. It can be derived from, uh, from the collision terms. And the, and the good point is that we knew, we knew that this, with the kinetic regime, we can work with the RTA because when normal scattering is not important, you can work with the RTA approximation. So we can work, work with the RTA approximation to calculate this. We can work with the RTA uh, approximation to calculate this, even the collective regime. And at the end, you have this, uh, these expressions for the thermal conductivity in terms of temperature for these uh, semiconductors. Here we have put the actual value of the sigma for silicon and the kinetic and the collective regime, the, the two limits, only the kinetic and only the collective. Okay, so you can see this an interpolation and, and as you can see, this is, this is what I tried to you to say. This is not extreme, this is not exactly the value of um, of the thermal conductivity in the kinetic regime, so there are slightly different. And this tells you how normal uh, scattering is acting as a resistive because when you use a relaxation time approximation, including the normal, you are telling that normal scattering is resistive when it's not resistive. But if you, if you do an expansion, of, well, expansion, if you put this here, and you assume that this is a little, this is a 10% of the, of the value, you can get from this, only from this, you can get the relaxation time approximation including the normal. So that's the reason why it seems that normal is acting as resistive when it's not. I want you to notice that in the kinetic and in the collective regime, we only have work with resistive terms. We have not used normal terms in, the can, in thermal conductivity. Okay, so uh, if, we, if we combine this with the, with the, with the previous approach of the hydrodynamics, we can get from ab initio these predictions. Once again, I don't want to trust so much this. I just want you to tell you that the, the, the curves are good enough, okay? Uh, and using KCM, we solve the diamond and solve the nanowire, okay? That's, that's the main idea. This is an overview of our approach. We can go work with the uh, bulk, with the nanoscale. It's based on ab initio. The only thing is that we have uh, a relaxed the numerical, uh, uh, the numerical.
Okay. Uh, and then at the end, uh, this is uh, some, uh, some experiment that we have done with the group of Professor uh, Sakuri in Purdue University. Uh, we have tried to see a thermal map that maybe is going to uh, tell us this special profile, if uh, we can understand this special profile. The, 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 main, the main idea is to heat this tiny wire and use this as a thermometer to test the thermal reflectance imaging, and then comparing this, try to obtain a thermal, uh, well, obtain a thermal profile in terms of the position, okay? You heat this, you get the heating, you get a reduction, a reduction the, the, the heat is flowing from here to the, to the sides, and you get the, the, the thermal profile. When you use the bulk thermal conductivity to understand the, the, this uh, profile, and you use the, the bulk thermal conductivity and you put the power that you are putting with the wire, you get something that it cannot explain the, the heating in the heater and the heating in the uh, thermometer. You can under uh, not understand this. But well, this that does not mean that Fourier law is not uh, valid. We can change to some effective thermal conductivity and the, the Fourier law is still valid. But when you do this reducing the thermal conductivity you the, of the substrate, the, the, the substrate that you are measuring, you obtain an increase in the thermal conductivity, uh, in, the, in the temperature here, but you get a worse approach here. And if you increase the thermal conductivity to explain this, you get uh, far away from this observation. So at the end, effective thermal conductivity cannot be uh, used to understand these results. We don't get a profile that uh, explains us uh, all, the, all the things. This is something that it has been done by Cahill's group, for example. They, they heat uh, materials, different materials, for example, silicon, and they obtain they obtain with the isotropic thermal conductivity uh, uh, prediction that it gives you uh, an increase in the in the temperature at the sites, but they need an, isotro an, an isotropic thermal conductivity to understand the full profile. This is what uh, they have done. Well, I assume. Well, I don't know why he has done this, but it works. It works. So it can explain something. It gives you physical information. Well, we have done this with the KCM, and we obtain this uh, this plot with a single L. With an L, we can get this approach. But this is not the only thing. the The thing is that if we use exactly the same L for different lines, going from 10 uh, microns to 200 nano, with exactly the same L, we can make the prediction of the temperature. So it seems that this L, this, these are some results that are going to be, we, we have sent uh, to, to, to publication. And we are now uh, working on this. Okay? This is the physical in information that it gives you our, uh, our model. As we can obtain all the information because it's a finite element approach, you can get this. The, the white lines are the temperature gradient, the inverse of the, temp what the inverse, no, the, the, the negative uh, temperature gradient, and the Q is the red one. As you can see, when you go far away, Q is parallel to the gradient of T. But because of the Laplacian, near the, 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 the angles, when heat flux try to, uh, to curb, it cannot follow the thermal gradient because of normal conservation. They cannot follow and, and they need an extra time to go this. And what it, what it gives you this at the end, it gives you some kind of anisotropy because in this way, it cannot get so much energy. Well, in this way, it can go. And this is what Cahill obtained. So what I'm trying to say is that Cahill gives us the, the, the intuition, the physical intuition, we got some model that can explain these things that if you think about this, it, it, you may think that it has no sense that silicon, it, it is an isotropical, but if you look at our formalis, it gives you a way to obtain this uh, effective anisotropy. This is uh, our approach. Well, another thing that we, uh, I finish with this, I'm uh, just in time. If we calculate the effective thermal conductivity locally, that is, the heat flux divided by the gradient of T, this gives us the thermal conductivity locally. And what we get is that 
where the thermal con where the where the oh, no uh, far away from the heater we get the value of the thermal conductivity this is silicon that it gives you the bulk value but when you go uh, near the, surf the, 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 the contact point, you get a thermal conductivity that's, that is very reduced. If you look at this image, you can think that this blue space, it can be modeled as a thermal boundary resistance. That is another approach that is standardly used to understand this, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, of experiment. So, what I'm trying you to say is that due to the viscosity, we can get the, inter the interpretation in terms of the thermal boundary resistance and the interpretations in terms of anisotropic uh, behavior. That is something that, they, that it has been published. So, uh, uh, my conclusions are, are these, uh, the extended and the non-local approach can give you a different approach, a different that is complementary to your approaches, uh, for sure, um, to describe experiments. Uh, hydrodynamic, that is the first mm, non-Fourier uh, uh, equation that you get, can, can be used to understand uh, simple uh, geometries. And uh, combining this with KCM that tries to put the normal scattering in a correct way, you can get nice approximations that allows you to solve uh, complex, uh, complex uh, situations. So I want to finish just remembering my colleagues that most of the work has been done by all of this. I'm just representing them. This is our financial super. And just I want to finish just to stating again that I don't work, I, I'm not going to tell you that this is the truth, this is just a complementary vision that we are, we want to explore connecting with other approaches. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Questions? Oh, please. So you have shown uh, vortices, you have shown Poiseuil flow. Do you think it's also possible to see something like a Rayleigh number and what? turbulent flow or stuff like that? Rayleigh. Rayleigh. No, not for a second sound, just to see, like, Poiseuil flow in a fluid would be the, a fluid in a laminar regime. Ah, so no, if you go... Okay, no, I understand. Okay, no. It's important to that don't take the name so, uh, so seriously. What am I doing? the name. But if you go to higher order terms, no, that doesn't, doesn't appear. No. 